Hey, this is your boy, Elder Keith Hume. Today, I'm going to talk to you all about the importance of your nonprofit. Some of you all have a misconception about nonprofits. I think you're thinking that, well, I'm going to wait until I get to, you know, my nonprofit approved before I can actually get started. Well, that's contrary to everything that nonprofit is about. Now, let's define what nonprofit is. It is something that you will not make a profit from. It is a social service movement. It is a, an organization that's designed to bring about some change to the community and people that are disenfranchised, marginalized. There's so many different definitions, but let's just stick to the content, uh, context in which we're actually doing this presentation and the whole purpose about why you are setting your nonprofit up through my training. All right, just to give you a little history about my nonprofit, it was called Bridging the Gap. And my nonprofit was strictly designed to help people that was transitioning from dependency to independency, whether they was coming out of jail, whether they was coming out of prison, or whether they were just transitioning from a, a, some type of financial situation, but related to drug addiction, okay? And I stuck with that. I didn't do anything other than drug addiction and transitional living. So if you are you know, a part of my mastermind tribe, then you too are associated with those parameters in which I just described. So yes, you may have your nonprofit already. You may already have it uh, be, uh, have your determination letter from the IRS. And what that simply means is that you have been defined as a tax exempt organization by the internal revenue services. That, is different from the state registered corporation. So a state registered corporation can receive donations, but it cannot get government grants or foundation grants. So let's get that understood. So some of you all tell me, yeah, I already got my 501c3, but yet and still you do not have your 501c3. I'm sorry. You tell me that you have your nonprofit, but yet you don't have your 501c3 or your determination letter from the IRS. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to talk today about different strategies and the importance of how to actually start branding your nonprofit so that you can start getting the traction as well as getting the funding that you need in order to get started. It's a very, very sad commentary um, when I have people that have a nonprofit and they, they know absolutely nothing to do, you know, nothing. They don't know anything about what to do with it. So when I say it's a sad commentary, I mean, well, let me pull back a little bit. Some people end up getting a nonprofit just because they heard that that's a good thing. Okay, well, that's good. But there's also some people that get the nonprofit in order to provide those wraparound services that I talk about, but yet they don't have any funding. And that's probably one of the most difficult things that they have, uh, those barriers in order to overcome. So I want to help you guys discover what those barriers are and how to overcome them and what to do about it. Okay, so let's go into this. I'm going to be talking about 26 different strategies, and I'm just going to gloss over it right now. So what you're going to get out of this mastermind training, number one, is you're going to get some fundraising strategies. I'm going to get you some donation letters that you can actually template it. It's, I'm sorry, it's already templated. You can just change your name, put your information on there. Fundraising strategies to mobilize donors, uh, fundraising strategies for marketing and advertising, digital fundraising strategies for nonprofits, partnership funding uh, uh, funding strategies and event fundraising strategies. So I'm gonna talk about these six areas right here in this mastermind training. So what is fundraising strategies? So fundraising strategies are not abstract concepts or thoughts locked away in your head. They are explicit instructions, their goals, and their processes put down in a document for all to see, including your staff, supporters, board members, and the public. Think of your fundraising strategy as your financial roadmap to success. Your fundraising strategy can have many parts and will consist of tried and true methods you repeat each year and others that might 
be a new that that might be new to your organization and outreach. Now, the tips that follow are 26 tools that you can add to your fundraising strategies to get started on your path to success. Now, as far as mobilizing your donors, the key to successful fundraising is to find the best way to engage your donors and spark them into action. Understanding what sparks them to, to action is where the work comes in at. In this article and in this training, we'll give you a, free, a few free tips and strategies to engage your potential supporters and to turn a critical eye toward the work of your fundraising uh, team. Now, here are some tips for mobilizing your fundraising strategies. All right. The more passionate your donors are about your cause, the more likely they are to contribute. Passionate fundraisers create passionate donors. Having a well-informed and well-incentivized staff is the first step to success. Now, how do you incentivize people? How do you get them motivated? How do you get them involved in what you're doing? One of the things that a lot of people do that becomes trite and becomes a little bit boring is that they just go out and they pretty much sit on a sit at a table and they wait for people to come to them. I don't do that. What I would like for you guys to do is find out all the places that the homeless people are, that people that are coming, the people that need your services and come up ways and means in order to reach them. So I'm going to give you guys a blueprint on how to do that. One thing that I want you to do is, is, you know, get your assessment form. So every time you talk to people, if you are a ministry, I want you to go out and pray with those folks. If you're not a ministry, then I want you to collect information, but you got to give something to them in order to get it. Then you record that information and then you place that on your social media platform. Very important that you just don't place words, but that you place words that would incite and bring passion to the people that you're very that that you're looking to actually donate and people that you want to join your organization. So, give you an example of what I mean. So when you go out and you start giving out bag lunches or you start giving out soda water or, or, or anything like that, when you start giving it out, you want to ask them questions, critical questions, such as, you know, where do you live? What is your support network? What are your goals? Do you have needs such as food stamps, housing, medical? Are you on medication? What types of medication? And the purpose of you asking those questions is, is that you want to be able to collect that data and be able to serve those folks through your nonprofit five basic need programming. Okay. Now, what are the five basic need programming? I'll get into that a little bit later. But the first thing you want to do is you want to take and start collecting that information. Now, let's say you do a video, you do, do a video shoot. You want to ask their permission. Can you videotape them and add them on, onto your program? Because you're trying to help other people and you're trying to raise funds in order to help them. If they disagree, then do not put those, that person in your video. So with if they agree, boom, you let them sign paperwork stating that they agree to be videotaped for the purpose of enhancing the services that you're providing. Remember that, enhancing the services that you're providing. Okay, so once you do that, then you take and you upload that on your website as well as your social media platform. Now, when you upload it, what you want to say is volunteers needed to relieve homelessness for a vulnerable population of people or COVID related outreach to help people that are stuck in a cycle of depression and homelessness receive, you know, uh, the help that they need, okay? All right, that's number one. 